The sages tell us that when he was a very young person, Abraham, Avraham, realized there must be a creator. There's no way the world and all of its inhabitants could have possibly happened through an accident. And God, as he so often does for all of us, left Avraham some breadcrumbs, a little trail to follow so that he could test his theory. The Torah previously has told us that there were 10 generations between Adam, the first man, and Noah, who saved humanity and repopulated it after the flood. And then there were 10 generations between Noah and Avraham. But if you do the math, you'll see something very interesting. Because the people in the early generations lived so long, there was a lot of overlap. Adam, the first man, was still alive during the lifetime of Lemech, Noah's father. So Noah could have spoken to his father to get first-hand information about his father's interactions with the first man created by God. And Noah lived so long that he was still alive when Avraham was born, ten generations later. So when Avraham tracked down and met up with Noah, he would have been able to have conversations with someone who had received direct communication from God himself. And the sages tell us that Avraham not only got a chance to meet Noah and Noah's son Shem, but that Avraham also spent time with them. He spent a period of time living in their home. The Medrash, in fact, records a very fascinating conversation between Avraham and Noah's son Shem. Avraham asked Shem, in what merit did you and your family survive the flood? Shem said, through kindness. Avraham said, I don't understand. There were no poor people on the ark. Shame said, correct, but there were animals. We did kindness to them. We didn't sleep while we were on the ark. We took care of each one of the species day and night. And upon hearing that, the measure says, Avraham immediately went out and opened his inn, his famous inn of hospitality, where he would serve fine food and drink to guests of all races and religions and creeds and teach them about the one God, the true God. But it still seems strange, analyzing that story. Avraham didn't know that there were animals on the ark. When he was a kid, his parents didn't buy him a Noah's Ark toy filled with animals. He must have known. Apparently, what he didn't realize was that taking care of animals would give humans enough merit to survive the flood while the rest of mankind was being destroyed. And so apparently, he reasoned, if taking care of animals, those creatures of God, will give mankind that type of merit, then imagine how much merit I would get, or we would get, from taking care of our fellow men. So instead of going out and opening a zoo or a veterinary clinic, and he opens up an inn so that he can do kindness for his fellow man. And now we can begin to appreciate the difference between Noah and Avraham. When God told Noah that he was going to destroy the world, as far as we can tell, Noah didn't argue. But later, when God tells Avraham that he's going to destroy just a few cities, Sodom and the surrounding cities, Avraham passionately pleads for them, tries to convince God not to destroy them, notwithstanding the evil ways of their inhabitants. Avraham's shouting from the rooftops. Monotheism, the belief in one God, isn't enough. We need ethical monotheism. We've got to take care of each other. Not only animals, those creatures of God, but more importantly, our fellow man. And God, of course, makes that message the central one in the Torah. The Torah begins and ends with kindness. It opens with God clothing Adam and Eve in the garden. And it closes with God burying Moses. And in between, it's chock full of stories of kindness and sympathy and empathy practiced by and role modeled by our patriarchs and their children and Moses and his siblings, teaching us lessons, telling us that we've got to love our neighbor and telling us how to do it, telling us how honest we have to be in business and how straight we have to be in our dealings with fellow man. And then God gives that Torah to the Jews and sends each of us out, tells each one of us, as he told Abraham, lech lecha, go out for yourselves. Be ambassadors of goodwill. Be ambassadors of my message, how important it is to take care of one another. Make each of your homes an inn of hospitality. Thank you.